honorable and respected delegates of various colleges from the state of Andhra Pradesh, respected teaching faculty of UCI Ajay, respected academic members of the Department of Chemistry, research scholars of the Chemistry Department, PG students, UG students. And all my dear students, good morning to one and all. Thank you very much for your contribution. Yesterday we had a very successful interaction of the first day in the function of the two-day strategic seminar on the recent evolutions and applications in the chemistry in the theme of REACH 2022 by the Department of Chemistry, Government College Management Team. Very excellent micro instructions yesterday. We come out of the various related distinguished papers I have attended by yesterday's program, headed by our teacher, John Director of Higher Education, Dr. C. S. Krishnamalu, Professor and Academician, Dr. P. Shyamla Medalaru, head of the Department of Chemistry from Amla University, Wate, and several distinguished resource persons from various walks of life. Long way from Odisha, from Bharatpur and Bhuneshwar. Now today we try to start with our second session of the second day of our national program. Today's technical session is headed by so one of the uh, alumni of our institution, GCRTY, of 1999-2001 batch from the Department of Chemistry for UG courses. Dr. K. Panikiran, Manager, Ashland LLC, Hyderabad, Long Term from Telangana. Now may I request Dr. K. Panikiran Garu to come on to the stage and occupy his seat. I request all the students to take a good applause. <laughs> so before we try to start this technical technical section, now look at a glance of our biodata and profile. Now I invite uh, Srimati C. H. Rajini Madam of the Department of Chemistry uh, to try to address the gathering with this three uh, five. Please, Madam. Analysis, 
and patent portfolios presentation. He delivered talks in various national seminars on the issues related to intellectual property rights and chemistry in US and India. Along with the number of key webinars and workshops. Now I request Dr. K. Pankiran Garu to deliver his talk on intellectual property rights. How this chrome topography will look like in the advanced session? So, 
first of all, I am staying at the what exact is chromatography. So, definition of chromatography. Okay. So, coming to this chromatography, what exactly the chromatography means? Chromo means color. Generally, in the Greek, the word itself, chromo means color. And the graphy means to write. So, that, that means the colors that are written on a certain paper or a certain uh, certain uh, uh, surface is nothing but the chromatography. That means so wherever the colors are being exhibited on the paper is nothing but the chromatography. I will show you the definition how it is like. <laughs> Chroma means color as I said, and the graphy means to write. The combination of chromatography uh, representation something on paper. So coming to this, the combination of chromatography, how you have defined is why this chromatography is being used means when chromatography is what is the main application of chromatography means analyze, identify, purify and find. That means it can able to analyze and be able to purify the compounds as well as analyze the compound and identify what exactly the compound is. And then we can quantify how much it is. Suppose, for example, I am saying that some drug is there. So, drug, in order by means of this chromatography, you can easily able to analyze, identify, as well as purify and quantify this. This by means of using this chromatography. So, how it is originated and how it has been started in the sense means this is the, one of the scientists who started this by means of plant, from the plant. They have considered this one in the, in the 20th, 20th century. 20th century in the sense of the most in 1903 or 1906 in between. So, he started the first experiment which is nothing but uh, plant pigments. Plant pigments like chlorophyll. Aerobins and lamp of the sea started that one, and from that the chromatography stage has been started, and from this uh, the chromatography is originated from this scientist called as a thread. So this is Russian botanist which has been started uh, this in 1903. So from the uh, from the chromatography has been developed day by day. So he is a scientist. And the first analytical instrument which was made in 1952 that is nothing but the gas chromatography. I will explain one more in my next slide. So in 1951 the development has been started in 1970s and 1980s and from 2006 onwards the development as a ministry advancement. As this, as the set reach, which is that the application of use is also has been developed. Day by day, the chromatography techniques have been developed. So, what are the important terms? Just uh, I want to say this word should be revised before going to the next slide. Why? Because this slide, the, whatever name that I am saying, these words have to be critical in the next slide. So, just I am giving the glossary of these words. So what is exactly chromatography means? Instrument apparatus of chromatography. The next one is eluent. Eluent means the possessor. Some fluid is entering in the column. I will explain that. That means uh, something that is going in a mobile phase is nothing but an eluent. Eluent is fixing into the column, which is nothing but a stationary phase, that means nothing but which is a which is we will not do at a time. So even elution means the passage of the mobile phase. Flow rate that means uh, uh, how many per minute it calculates in terms of minutes is nothing but the flow rate. Per minute, how much has been uh, coming outside? So, in the linear velocity, the linear velocity can be calculated by means of mobile phone per minute in the column. So, these are the terms that we are generally we will go through the next slide so that I am giving the glossary of this slide so that we can be able to understand the next slides. Coming to the phases in chromatography, there will be two phases. Whenever you have you go to the chromatography, wherever which technique you have, you have followed, there, are, there will be two techniques which there are. First 
one is the stationary phase and the second one is the mobile phase. Stationary phase is always fixed. The stationary definition itself it is a fixed state, and the mobile phase is nothing but uh, the uh, partial state. That means it is not stationary. It is always in terms of movement. That means movement is there. Means it is a uh, it is it is an uh, uh, moment is nothing but a stationary and as well mobile phase. Mobile phase means so it is to be considered as solid phase and for stationary phase and mobile phase is nothing but the moment phase. Yes. So how it will be look like now? Uh, I will show you that. So photography means which is basically separating is uh, in terms of using stationary phase as well as mobile phase. That means whatever the compounds the separating use of stationary and mobile phase is nothing but the chromatography. This is the advanced definition of chromatography. So coming to this, as I said, stationary phase is always uh, undergoes adsorption. As you know, adsorption and absorption. The difference between the absorption is that the absorption it takes place on the surface of the surface. Whereas the absorption means it will go into the the quality. So that's why the absorption as well as absorption is completely based on stromatographic techniques. So absorption means within the surface. We wherever it goes into the goes into the surface means that is absorption. So this is also in one of the important techniques that we will into the chromatography. So these are the principles of chromatography. So what exactly they are going into the chromatography means. So these are the chromatography techniques that are followed in terms of principles of separation. So what are exactly separations mean? The partition, ion exchange, uh, and then the absorption, affinity, and size exclusion. So these are the five important uh, basic separation techniques that they are using in the chromatography. First one is the uh, first one is Say partition that means based on the partition, the partition of the molecules they will separate uh, in the mobile phase and stationary phase. Ion exchange based on the ion exchange that means so some, some ions something like sodium and chloride in their ions based on their ion FAD they will separate. The size based on the size that means uh, in terms of nanometers, in terms of micrometers, if you say that based on the size of the molecule also. They are ready to separate. And the next one is the absorption. As I said, based on the absorption, also the separation takes place. Affinity. So the molecule affinity, that means the molecule attraction, by means of the attraction of the molecule, also the separation takes place. So these are the techniques they generally they follow in the chromatography. These are the five techniques which are familiar with the chromatography. So the other set substances which are having the total charge, charge is nothing but ion exchange, shape, as I said, size, shape, hydrophobic and hydrophilic groups which are entering into the stationary phase. So similarly, the, the, as I said, metallism, ion exchange, surface absorption, partition and size exclusion are the main things. So coming to the next one is the polar and mass polar compounds. If you have to know what exactly the polar and mass polar compounds. The polar compounds is generally there will be charge will be there. Charge difference generally we consider as a polar compounds. Whereas the charge is neutral in the sense they are having all the sides we have the same thing in then it is not polar. So these non-polar and the polar liquids uh, plays a crucial role in the mobile phase. So what, how exactly these uh, compounds will be there means if you see half of the, uh, if you see that the cutting of the half of the, half of the presentation, the uh, upper part is nothing but the polar field, how it is increasing, and the polar is decreasing in these compounds. So in the answer, it's not known as sugar, sugar also, so the polar compounds are in but the polar is increasing. Whereas in the hydrophobic, it is nothing but the gel. Uh, the bottom uh, compounds like fatty acids, aromatic acids, polymers, monomers, slightly red, it comes under this non polar compound. Uh, how this uh, and what it is similarly the vapor is the vapor the vapor also increases in this. So just I 
How we 
is Flowing from downwards to upwards is nothing but the descending, and upwards to downwards is nothing but the descending rope of music. There are two types of rope of music, one is descending as well as descending. So these are the techniques that are used in the rope of music. Similar to the chiropractic, but there is a thing that is using the tap. Like, 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 like
then they are giving you food that is similar as this and there will be some carbohydrates as we separated. Similarly, polyamides, if you use the solvent as a polyamide, then phenols, flavonoids, nitrocompounds as we give you a bonded C structure, particularly good for phenols, carboxyl gases, carbohydrates, sulfur gases, nucleotides, and nucleosides. Similarly, sign of bonded C structure, particularly good for the pesticides, and the pesticides is also one of the techniques they are using here in the terms of agriculture. Similarly, they are bonded C structure. Particularly good for steroids, hormones, and then we have the chiral modified seed culture, and so much of amino acids, allogeneic, and alkyl, and alpha amino acids. Amino acids will consider this modified seed culture, and the last one is the seed culture impregnated in silver nitrate. The lipids which are easy to separate by means of this stationary phase. To the next one is the gas chromatography. So this is the one of the important technique generally in the pharmaceuticals they are using this and they are HPLC. They are going the gas chromatography and HPLC, high level liquid chromatography are the important techniques that are going to use in the pharmaceuticals. So how it will look like this kind of So these are the components in the gas chromatography. Here in the column chromatography, the liquid is the mobile phase. In this gas chromatography, the gas is the mobile phase. The stationary phase is always the same. The solid is the stationary phase. So whenever the liquid gas will uh, go, go into that and pressurize the compounds and it will separate accordingly. So here the gas is used together. So that's why it is called as a gas chromatography. So the gas chromatography, this type of carrier gas is always a mobile phase gas. Stationary phase is solid. So uh, this technique is commonly used for the volatile substances. That means the volatile compounds, there are the volatility of the compounds has been taken. Then only those compounds are very much maybe there in this in this gas chromatography. So uh, as that uh, comes to the parts of the gas chromatography, there is the carrier gas like helium, nitrogen, uh, uh, hydrogen, as well as argon can be used. The gases like nitrogen, uh, hydrogen, yeah, even uh, uh, argon, everything has been used as a carrier gas. And the sample injection ports will be there, not to the nanometers will be there. It comes to the detectors, this is FID, ECD, and ECD, as well as FPD and photo ionization. Uh, they are directed uh, to the be used. So the most chamber in the air and amplifier and regard the generation of the part is going to be there. So how is uh, the technique? The, the, in this, the, the stationary phase, I said, no, how it will look like a stationary phase? This is like a tube. This is a tube. These are the different types of parts uh, that is exciting carbohydrates, flavors, texture modifiers, as well as vitamins. Pesticides has been used to analyze. So these are the compounds that are like pesticides, drugs, everything can be easily separated by means of gas chromatography. So these are the generally detectors that are going to be a crucial role in the development phase. How it will look like in a lab? This is the gas chromatography. How it will look like in a lab? So uh, so these are the injected at a time or uh, you can inject at a time and you can get the same and you can get the same and you can get the same so this is the gas pump production how it looks like and this is the column that is inserted in the gas pump production and this is how it looks like update the unit then uh, this is the HPLC from the next one in the HPLC from the So, uh, how do you like the solid? We are the As I said, the station and the mobile phase will be different. In the station, there is solid and the mobile phase will be liquid. And liquid. So, that's why it is called as a liquid chrome chromatography. So, this is the liquid chrome chromatography, how it will look like. And, uh, these are the techniques as I said, these are the techniques absorption, absorption, ion exchange, as well as delta different techniques are the used. Once the uh, once we completed uh, everything, the problem is that the final picture will be 
even in terms of graphs like this, one of the compound here, how the separation takes place by means of this graph, graph compound A, compound B, and compound C. So, they are coming to the evaluation of chrome tower FPS, chrome tower FPS, in 1970, they have started the chrome tower FPS technique, and coming to the 1970, they have started from 10 micrometers, then 3.52, 2.5 uh, in 1990, 1990s and 1990s, sorry, in 1990s 5 micrometer and in 1990s 2.5, but that means the level of the micrometer has been increased, that means the rate is So, and even for less than 2 micrometers and 0.7 micrometers, so the seven is to the 1.5, that means the diameter has been increasing and the micrometers of separation is increasing. So, in how it looks like in 1976 and uh, 1996, in 2004, the water has been started as UPLC, this is in 2009, and this is in uh, 2013 to 2015. And this is how it looks like nowadays in the lab, how the HPLC has been looking like this. So UPLC and UP, UPHPLC is one of the important things that is going to nowadays. So these are the detectors, as I said, these are the detectors that are using the DC and HPLC. So these are the same ionization detectors from hydrocarbons and then thermal conductivity universal detectors and then electron capture for halogenated compounds. That are the halogenated compounds and non spectroscopy compounds or nitrogen and phosphorus compounds. And the electroconductivity compounds and then halogen sulfur nitrogen and then photo ionization techniques compound ionized by UV radiation and then with the latest technology is Fourier transformer using the IR technology, IR technology by means of the organic compounds the current base has been used with the HPLC and GC the combinations. Based on this combination, the detectors has been Use. That means the liquid chromography has been connected with the spectroscopy and as well as DC is also connected with the spectroscopy techniques so that the compounds can be easily separated. So the next one is the supercritical fluid chromography. So what is exactly supercritical fluid chromography means based on the high pressure liquid chromography PMSP pressurized and there is a supercritical point is that as I shown here. If you see the right side of my slide, there will be boiling point as well as, uh, as, well as the critical point will be that where this super critical fluid chromatography has been uh, uh, has been used. Uh, this is a sort of conductance chromatography. Yeah, it is also part of the conductance chromatography. So this technique has been used in the nowadays and this chromatography is one of the very of the techniques that are used in so, uh, this is how it will look like in the lab. So, based on this, uh, as I said, the, the, the critical pressure as well as the critical pressure points will be there, and you could have grab up where exactly it is going to uh, convert those, uh, those techniques as we do in this thing. So, uh, if you see this compound, where the model phase has been used by carbon dioxide, as well as the nitrogen oxide, as well as methanol, the these are some of the compounds that are used in the a uh, super critical chromatography. So, he, he, as I said, these are the main important uh, chromatography techniques. One is the DC, uh, next one is the reverse resistance liquid chromatography, normal cell liquid chromatography, and the critical chromatography. As I said, so the main difference is the inert gas, the gas chromatography, and then uh, the reverse phase HPLC, the H2O based compounds will be used as the mobile phase and in the and in the normal phase liquid chromatography, organic based compounds have been used as an uh, as a uh, mobile phase and in the, as I said the SKF in the number of chromatography, COT is the main use in the as is, as a mobile phase. So these are the mobile phases that are used in the uh, chromatography techniques. Coming to the latest technologies, how do we integrate as you know, first of all, the next uh, ELC, HPLC, GC, these are all the old techniques and these are the, nowadays they are using the important techniques in from the 2004 onward. So these are the important techniques that the development has been expressed from uh, 
from different years. For uh, instance, the UPSC started from 2004, so there the present has been 15,000 PSL. So that means 15,000 present, 15,000 PSL present has been created so that the compound will contain the present and based on the present, they will separate. So the present, in terms of present, they are increasing so, and, uh, increasing so much so that easily that the separate has been taken place. So similarly, you have CLC in nothing but uh, uh, it is uh, almost uh, below 2 micron particle level. That means uh, very, very, very minute level that particle size has been connecting and operates around 20,000 PSP range. PSA range. That means the pressure has been for almost 20,000 range has been present maintained. And there is UPSC around 15,000 and UHPLC around 20,000 and less than 2 micrometers uh, uh, particles have been separated. So this is the chromatography uh, where the operation of the technology has been used. <coughs> so that means as I said, the ultra high pressure as well as ultra small time in tiny particles will be near in the situation. So this is how it is the cause of the relationship so this is how it will utilize in the lab. This is the UPLC and this is the VHPLC. So now the advanced chromatography, as I said, the chromatography has been combined with spectroscopic techniques. Nothing but the mass spectroscopy has been connected with this chromatography and they are using the different different types of of uh, the uh, instrument. As I said, uh, so from 2001, if you see HPLC, MS, Master, UHPLC, Master, Microsoft, in terms of the time of flight, detectors has been included. So, solid and micro extraction, this is one of the techniques you will capture, you will come up with this is also one of the techniques they are doing right now. And since there is a high performance chromatography, the using the micro chips also they are now they are using and they are separating the compounds of organic compounds. So it is the uh, rapid resolution liquid chromatography as well as the nanos and immunoimmune X-ray chromatography. So these are the advanced techniques that they are using in the nowadays in the former science. Mass spectroscopy coming to the picture with the GC and HPLC. Just I want to show the uh, mass spectroscopy detectors how it is. So, uh, why not the LC, LC system is there? Then it is connected to the ion source detector. And the connected to the ion source detector that can analyze the equipment of water for ion trap, e that means nothing but the time of flight, water for ion traps. From this trap, they will trap the electrons to the ion compound and they they have been detected using the mass spectroscopy and then we will convert into the data system. So based on this mass spectroscopy and the LC system, it is easy to identify the compound. So this is the one of the important technology that they are nowadays we are using. So this is the mass analyzer generating water for ion trap and time of rate changes are being used nowadays. This is how it will look like. This is the in the lab. This is the end of it using the mass spectroscopy. How they are using. So uh, the what are the applications and uh, we said the technique. Yes, so as I said, these are the important techniques that are being used to operate from this. Either this by means of this fatty acid, steroid, phenol, phenol, alkyl, methyl, alkyl, the surfactant, phenoxy acid, and phenyl, urea, supplements, and PFS, and organic radiocarbon, and phenol, the phenol, the phenol, the phenol, the phenol, the phenol, the the and these are the compounds that are separated from GCMS. That means more and less polar compounds are generally taken into the consideration of GCMS, GCMS and LCMS are, are, are generally being analyzed using more polar compounds. So, as I said, the 
So then we are practicing how it is seven to eight glass in the water, the opportunities and how it will be there. Just I have a given and sometimes so that's why I have to prepare some slides. So then we this is the history how the paper types of things will be there. I just know that we all know that the analytical and analytical are the main important just to know. But nowadays, if you see yeah, the things that have been the subject in so many, uh, so many of them are in there, but uh, so many you know, particularly there are uh, specific courses that have been in there. One is the environmental, agricultural, computational, forex, games, treatment, agrochemistry, human informatics, geochemistry, nuclear chemistry, biotechnology, crystallography, medieval, nuclear, textile, chemistry, so if you see after BSC, there are so many chemistry uh, fields are there which you can able to not only these uh, uh, which are given in the world are uh, you can also have a different types of chemistry. So this is the environmental agriculture and competition also having different opportunities and you can have this chemistry. So uh, definitely what exactly you want to do as a premise there that will be so many of questions we do that. So just I want to uh, give an uh, idea on this. So the history you can go nowadays either teach either academy or you can go to the either industry. So there are so many industries are there and there are any academics are, are also there. So just after BSC chemistry you may go to some of the MSC as well as in terms of job, you can go to the industry job, government job, whatever. So then you go to the field, then go to the field, then you do this is the category that, that's what you do. So next I want to show you the different government jobs that are at and different private jobs that we are having. So similarly, in terms of academics and industry, there will be a private field, a income mission to be there, communication to be there, and then timelines also and private. So that's the idea. So, the scope of the chemical sector, you see, India ranking the sixth in the world, the chemical sector has contributed 3% to the global chemical industry. So, almost 25% of the GDP is the manufacturing sector by 2025. So, chemical industries have been diversified to commercial products, either bulk chemicals, metallic chemicals, hydrochemicals, petrochemicals, polymers, fertilizers, pharmaceuticals, food additives. So, chemical industry has been uh, divided like this. The first one will be the bulk drugs, the fine chemicals, the specialty chemicals. So, coming to the bulk drugs, there will be the large volumes of purchase on the based on the uh, chemical composition, purity, and price. There are five the fine chemicals in the but undefined secret, small volume. And there is a uh, in terms of fine to level issue. And in terms of specialty chemicals, they are not the main product, but they are, they are the excellent of that product. They are, they are the small volumes. So if you say the bulk means it is in the higher level, that means in terms of plants, they are they able to uh, sell or buy. In terms of fine chemicals and specialty chemicals, they are the bulk level. That is, in the analytical level, this is a perfect level. So, there are different methods, as I said, the large scale production would be expressed in bulk chemicals and the small scale, as well as very small chemicals and the tops of very small chemicals, but the majority chemicals. So, these are different completely different companies. Nowadays, as we can sort of it into three main types. So, process formulation and product innovation has been started. Operation management will come to the bulk. Uh, interest and fine chemicals will come out of the marketing as well as sales as well as operation management and the special chemicals mainly in the R&D as well as in the marketing and sales. So uh, coming to the subfield, if you say environmental industry, generally the analytical and physical industry will come out the nowadays if you say everywhere you can go but uh, these are generally uh, how it will be considered. So if you say and food, organic, inorganic, even animal things to do with and computer things anybody can do. And the forensics, analytical and all that we are pursuing now. And the paint, treatment and coatings, any case will be considered comes out. And as for the students, they will be used they are considered now. And chemical informatics is also can anybody can study. And geochemistry, analytical, and the nano 
Coming out uh, nowadays, that is the treatment of forensic science. You see, this is the toxicology and perfumes and chemical informatics, chemical health and safety and science for uh, science policy and this. So these are the new industries that are going to be available nowadays for them. This is not only the students are the uh, something like the world uh, world as uh, scientists or something like as I said, these are all the countries are also. Okay. Give the crucial role in your knowledge, the job of a king. So, that is said, in terms of prevention, there is the RC, so production, quality control, and quality assurance. What is the ADAP? These are the main, the main uh, scripts of business that are present in the pharmaceuticals. The first one is the RD, the research, where the research is uh, takes place in the minor level as well as in the bulk level. In the production, production management, the bulk level, plus the annual in the production, in terms of the terms of the terms of terms, they are using the molecules to be prepared. And in the quality control, there will be the quality checking of each and every instrument, to use the instrument, as I said, in the instrument, they are using the quality control, whatever the instrument that I said. And quality assurance is also based on the norms of the USFDJ. They, they, they will uh, make you, uh, uh, that means every country is having certain policies. Based on the policies, you have to release the drugs and uh, based on the quality assurance lag. So, these are the pharmaceuticals, how they uh, main uh, R&D production and marketing are the main division. And within those, there are so many subdivisions will be there. So generally how this, uh, as I said, these are important uh, departments in the private uh, sector that are working on the clinical pharmacology and analytical chemistry, microbiology, pathways and development, intellectual property, quality assurance, drug related acquisition, natural and food product lab, information technology and these are the, these, these are the main things that are starting in the private uh, industry. So, as you see, you start from senior assistant science, senior science stack and MD. So, generally, I have to be general hierarchy, then we have to be different companies. But this is the general hierarchy that is present. So, these are the important uh, some of the companies that we go to the email. Now, so, that's the end. So, these are the same thing, you can say, why, you can say, also. And that's what that's the end. They can say, I'm not going to do it. So, you can. Go up and this is the of the lab, this is the having the prosperous uh, job Thank you. Thank you. Whatever it is. So, this, these experiments have been used at my company 
has been familiar with that and these companies allows the everyone to understand the exceeding technologies. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. K. Kanikiran Dharu, for your valuable uh, information related to this session. So, on behalf of uh, the Department of Ministry and DC Archive, so we extend our uh, sincere thanks for your wonderful presentation. So, as of today, we come across with many, uh, with, uh, many discussions and deliberations with uh, an immediate technique like Prometheus Gratty and uh, how the Prometheus Gratty has played an important role, playing a vital role in various fields. The applications in the existence of human mankind, whether it may be from human existence to all the biological systems, which are having a wide range of applications in health sectors, in biotechnology sector, what kind of agriculture sciences. So there is a lot of scope of wide range research is going on uh, this analytical technique related to product technology. So here you have a presentation, sir. How the analytical technique that was being embedded once upon a time, now what are the modern, in what the modern ways? The scientific techniques are playing an important role in the analysis of various uh, uh, types of uh, components, ingredients. So, present in the sample. And okay, we, so definitely, this type of uh, work or this type of uh, things can bring a lot of uh, research oriented in the areas of digital sciences. So, Simplani has given a wonderful scope about the opportunities and avenues what we are having after completion of our digital uh, uh, PhD program or PhD, what are the economic avenues? And the opportunities that have been pertaining to all the student community. So, definitely, this type of uh, uh, awakenings will bring a lot of uh, things to the student community after completion of their UG level or PG level. Those who want to go for a research oriented, so this type of wedding is going to a lot of uh, information. So, once again, thank you, sir, for your wonderful presentation. I will open for uh, the audience or the young minds who so want to share your doubts and clarifications. So, our resource person will be available. Uh, an open talk and discussion will be left over. Any students who are having any doubts or clarification, you can ask freely. <laughs> Sir, actually, in that you know, I request all the students to maintain silence. No more problems, please be seated. HPIC is one of the commodity of the HPIC. We have a separation that is going to be lost on the bicycle of the body and the body is going to be and the body is going to be different from the body. But when coming to particular A, A initial economic dimension is going to be that way that is going to be that way that proteins are going to be that way that way that is going to be that way that way that way that way that way that way so, we do it for many aspects of biotechnology, technology, and So, we have a lot of protein in HPLC, even in UPLC, based on the MRI, we have to do it. That's why we have a lot of gas components that are important for biological components like protein. Gas components are important for the GD. Thank you. 
Let me see three papers. And now I will discuss about the mind part. Physics is what? Okay. So in my physics day, in my work, I did three words. Three different words. First one, gold catalyst, synthesis of the polythene alkyl from bisecting crystal from epoxy alkyl. Second one, synthesis of the dialysis esters from benzene. And third one, and then it studies on the reduced selective mediation of the dietary protected two-fold dichloro and dichloro so now, uh, my first word. So here, I will read. The simple word is, I think it is very last time again. The word. Gold cattle reaction. Using gold, that is argon transformations. Okay. So gold has the property of carbon. Atomicity means gold can coordinate with the carboxyl group and then further transformations will take place. So, like this, gold has the property of coordinating with the double bond, triple bond, and then it's. And next, uh, gold can transform the cyclic compounds to open compounds. And it can do the reverse also. Means it can transform the open compounds to cyclizations also. Okay, these are some literature uh, I did. I explored. And this is transformations of to some uh, epoxy alkynes to some open compounds. And then, uh, actually, in my work, I did the synthesis of. Bicyclic esters. So this bicyclic ester moiety is uh, present in many biologically active compounds. So that's why I start to synthesize the bicyclic esters with gold catalysis. Okay. So these are some other letters of work by uh, done by some others. And this is also another gold one catalyzed. Transformations of the boxing are tends to cyclic by Okay? And gold, so here one of you have to keep in mind that gold 1 and gold 2 catalysts can be used for the transformations. Okay? Both gold 1 and gold 2, uh, gold sorry, gold 2, not gold 2, gold 3, plus 1 and the plus 3. I also like to use the transformations. So, esterides also can be formed. Okay. So, and, uh, this is my work. So, I prepared this epoxy alkynes and uh, reacted with the gold chloride, then some acetone. And initially, I formed, we got this bicyclic ester compound. Okay. And, uh, for establishing conditions, we need a state of uh, catalyst. Okay. So many other catalysts also can be used for this transformation. But we found that the platinum phosphine gold chloride and the silver platinum hexachloride is uh, more reactive. And, and then we synthesize the Epoxy alkane, so you this, and then this epoxy alkane is transformed into bicyclic ester using gold catalyst. So, like this. Okay, don't worry about the structures, so maybe you might not know, but you see that. So, how the gold is transformed into the epoxy alkane to bicyclic pump. So, that is more important. Uh, like this, the radial compounds we can synthesize and we transform it into products. Okay. And then we 
confirm the structure using SRD also. Okay, SRD for the models. And then we did this reaction for iron version also. Okay, iron, iron epoxy alkanes also we have to get, we transform into this bisectric esters. Iron bisectric esters in a stereospecific manner. Stereospecific manner means if you take this isomer, SS isomer, it will convert into so this SS compound. And if you take RR compound, then it will convert into RR bisectric compound. Like this, so we found and uh, we did the mechanics, me mechanistic studies of Okay. Here we found that C systemic transforms into endo bicyclic acetal and trans system into exo bicyclic acetal. So this is cis. So suppose here this phenylalanine and this alkane are in cis mode. They transform into endo bicyclic compound and this uh, trans moiety transforms into exobicyclic acetal. Okay. And then we did some integrated studies also for confirming the mechanism and we found the integrated interaction also. Okay. Uh, as already we have used Euclidean histone uh, disease and we got the integrated moiety. So all of these studies we need for confirmation of mechanism. Okay. And finally, we propose the mechanism. Okay. And we did some other material experiments also. Like this many parts of experiments we have done for establishing the mechanism. And finally, we draw the mechanism. We derive the mechanism like this. Initially, uh, this is uh, different, so you may have to simply get out of the So just to see the mechanism, how we have proposed the mechanism, that is more important. So for confirming, uh, for establishing this mechanism, we need many experiments. For uh, using tidal uh, version and integrated estimates. Okay? So by doing all these experiments, we have established this mechanism. So like this, finally, we got the product. So from here to here, this is the product. Okay? So this is our first work. So first uh, transformation of epoxy alkanes to bicyclic ester. So here, one thing you have to keep in mind. Here and there. So, it's open on simple uh, textbooks for simple experiment mechanisms are the first one. Mm -hmm. It's a man such a man of physical or mechanisms to establish power. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. A mechanism to establish it and be Chara background experiments to drop the experiments to get recognition experiments, Chara experiments to chase it, are the established experiments. So, that we have to keep in mind. Thank you for So, this is from diarrhea and from dendrites. Okay, diarrheal estic esters means so diarrheal group on a moiety on a compost and a moiety present in many naturally hundred products and the virus can react to moiety. So that's why we have to synthesize this diarrheal compost and we establish and we test out the matter the formation of this one. And this diarrheal means and one carbonate two other groups are present. So suppose for example, saccharin, sulfurin, so desulfurin, so PDP, weight phosphate, and the time, no more density. So like this, many beautiful uh, compounds have this moiety. Uh, so that's why we have to synthesize this molecule using our method. And these are some known literature for uh, diarrhea compounds. And then actually this work was uh, established from previous work only. Uh, 
means uh, the actual name of why the name is the actual selection of reaction is a financial okay separate financial and we are that by using some other kind of molecule we can separate this benzene form so benzene sir are hydroxy ketones so suppose to what two alkyl groups are there
So they have different type of enzyme substances and we transform into the products. Okay. So like this, this is what we did and uh, almost uh, almost uh, then one thing is that we keep in mind. So R enzymes and S enzymes also transform into products. So in the single specific manner. Single specific manner. Suppose for example if you take one substrate, we got one transforming product, chiral product. To make the other isomers transform into another product. So that is this uh, the same reaction and we got the high enantiomeric enantiomeric excess. Okay? So enantiomeric excess you know. This is the plausible mechanism for this transformation. The enzymes in terms of acid, titrate of the formula, it forms this acetal. Acetals are uh, reactive. So in terms of acid, it transforms into the product. Okay? This is uh, in this second work done. So in this uh, work, we transform the enzymes into diarrhea acids. So this diarrhea acid clusters are useful since they are present in many natural catalytic molecules. Okay. And uh, finally, we discovered another uh, interesting uh, discovery. So that is the deinsertification of dilate protective two flow dichlor and dichloro substitute enzymes. Generally, a uh, directing group present on uh, Aromatic calendar, uh, it will direct the incoming electrophile to come at this orbit. So, this is uh, normal. So, as, uh, for, uh, direct, as directing groups, there are uh, several directing groups, so strong uh, meta directing groups, sorry, strong uh, directing groups, moderate and weak uh, directing groups. Okay? So, actually, yeah, these two directing groups. So then, then the electrophile will substitute at the middle position. With two different uh, groups of the then, strong directing group can direct the electrophile to come at this side. So like this, uh, uh, directing groups affect the electrophilic, uh, sorry, electrophilic substitution reactions. Okay? So, yeah. So what we will discuss is, I have synthesized this molecule, which is having two directing groups and one is dietary group. Okay? And I thought if I use a metal lithium, lithium should occur at this position. So since this hydrogen is more acidic, the reaction should take place at that position. Okay? So according to the acidity. So lithium takes place at this position and after it will treat the electrophile so like this we will get the product. This is our expectation. But we got this product. So lithiation is directed by the directing groups, not because of the acidity. So here directing groups overcomes or they brings the acidity this proton is active because of this directing group. Okay? The actual SPD is very active. The SPD is the directing group, sir. A is in the And the study is just Okay? So, we found this product. Directing groups own the Directly, mediation takes place at this uh, other position, and we got this product. So, we can use as it is as a product. Okay? So, yeah, suppose this is the acidity. Suppose the pH values of this hydrogen uh, is uh, like this. You know, pH value is uh, more, acidity is less. Okay? So, if the molecule has a low pK value, sorry, if the hydrogen proton is having a low, low pK value, its acidity is more. 
Okay, so like this. So here, we actually this proton CSPT is more. Since this PK value is 21, and this proton PK value is 29. And the other best this reaction of the lithiation should take place at this position. But here the directing groups are leading. Uh, they are overcoming by the strip. Okay. So, like this. Yeah. So, these pictures are uh, calculated using the other calculations. Basically. Okay. And uh, so, we did a uh, separate reaction for this one. Okay. These are the substrates, different electrophiles, these are the products. And uh, this is attenuation. And uh, yeah. We found the coordination of the like this. Two, suppose, and the two directing groups are more important. That is, some two directing groups is important. Okay. One directing group is not the reactional. The important is the first one. Another way. Okay? No metal is full of blue, we got the less product. So, no metal is full of blue, we got the two common. In the way, we will have the electron donating groups, we will have the electron donating groups, we will have the direct list of the two. Yeah, like this, I will transform this dynamic compounds to useful. Dye functional compounds. And the molecules were R dye functionality, R dye functionality. Yeah, this is my application that. Okay, like this we did. And now here I am concentrating on different concept. That is the synthesis of some organic molecules and transforming them into materials. Okay, so now we are doing. So if you have any doubts, please.
डिस्ट्रिक्ट फैकल्टी आई आई एस ए आर बरहपुर सर आल्सो अचीव्ड नंबर ऑफ अवार्ड्स ऑफ हिज रिसर्च वर्क एंड आल्सो आर्ट वर्क दैट इज मेंबर ग्लोबल इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी कन्वेंशन जी आई पी सी 2018 डब्ल्यू आई पी ओ आई पी स्कॉलरशिप 2016 सर्व एन साइंटिस्ट इन 2015 तेलंगाना एन साइंटिस्ट इन 2015 डीएसपी इंस्पायर फैकल्टी 2012 यूनिवर्सिटी फर्स्ट एंड फोर्थ गोल्ड मेडल्स इन एमएससी 2004 इज हैविंग गुड एक्सपीरियंस इन रिसर्च एंड प्रूव एज अ गुड साइंटिस्ट बाय हिज रिसर्च वर्क सर हैविंग 34 पेटेंट्स इट इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम थिंग Thirty four patents, in which licensed are four published patents and twenty two publications. Sir delivered number of lectures and also attended training programs. It's a great opportunity, sir. I congratulate you, sir. Now I invite Dr. Kaur Kumar, sir, to enrich the participants with your knowledge by this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your detailed introduction. I am very sorry. I was supposed to come every morning, but somehow bus has brought me only just now. Yesterday, I was four o'clock. I started. I was supposed to take a train, but then I thought bus stand is just near to my house, so okay, both are maybe may not be much difference. Today, I understood. Sometimes we have time, but we cannot do anything. Now we have to do so many things, but short of time. So therefore, I try to uh, uh, make uh, the complete justification uh, for the purpose of inviting me here. Of course, maybe the uh, before lunch session might be a little shorter, but after lunch we have enough time. And I am very happy to see many of the young students present here. I can recollect my own college days, but I think during those times hardly this kind of programs used to happen. So all credit goes to your college management and especially the faculty of chemistry department. I am Dr. Sunita. I am Dr. Srinivas uh, for taking all efforts in inviting me and also my good friend Dr. Pani. So for giving me the connect. And I could see several of my old colleagues from I I I S P here. So very happy to meet you all again. Of course, with several of them I work very very long time. Satyan and I. So here, what I try to do is like in the very first session, I talk to you on organic catalysis, suspended synthesis. I think from last two days, from last few sessions, you might have heard about various aspects of chemistry, different branches. Uh, maybe Dr. Gupta might have spoken to you about uh, material aspects of chemistry. Today, I will be talking about organic catalysis. So here is my brief bio. Anyway, this has been already read. And these are the places from where I got my education, training, and also working experience. So as you uh, progress in your process of education or working, certainly you keep associated with some of the organizations. So likewise, uh, uh, with respect to chemistry, I was with IACT for PhD and also after PhD. But Dolchera is the company where I got introduced to IP, and I met my good friend Dr. Pani. He used to guide me there because already he was having some experience. Always used to teach me how to take about that. After few months, I could realize that somehow in India, academic and research communities have either neglected or ignored or did not realize to the extent they have to be about the aspects of IP art. There are scientists, professors, faculties, researchers with great number of scientific achievements. Right? We have publications, projects, research fellowships, and all this. But when you talk about IP, hardly tell you anything. Until I completed my PhD, I was not having any awareness. I have not seen also. Only the top patent IP, those things I might be knowing. But then I realized the value of IP. Even we used to, uh, we used to discuss many times. I could do some courses. Then luckily I had to go back to research again. So there, the IP knowledge and training has helped us a lot. Where we could integrate IP learnings with our research activities. 
right now if you find very few people or few research groups in, in india who are integrating iit with such activities so in my uh, sessions i will talk to you to you less on chemistry more on integrating iit with your research so that how we can contribute to effective research outcome and these are uh, the scientific contributions the left hand side part is very quite common for all the researchers whether you are in university research institute here or there so research projects publications as i mentioned they keep going but the right hand side part we could achieve only because of integrating ip with research if i was not introduced to ip then i would have done more and more publications which generally happens now i know ip but it becomes very difficult for me to educate the people around to realize the value of ip pope funny also realizes the same thing so we could do but if i am there yes people are people around me are doing if i am not there again they say that no one is just to be not do so somehow this learning is very very essential i know uh, they have filed about more than 30 patents out of them uh, 50 or 60 were already granted in different countries so of them are in process and very luckily <coughs> Four of our patents were licensed to Sun Pharma. Sun Pharma is one of the biggest pharma industry in India. And when we filed those patents, our intention was only to have some numbers in our profile. Whenever I send my profile, along with our other credentials, you may also get patents, patents. But luckily, we were so fortunate. We did find that we could license four of our patents. Now we have a standpoint opinion to uh, educate the people around us on the aspects of IT. So here, uh, under the catalysis, maybe uh, you might have heard, uh, heard about many kinds of catalysis. You know, there is catalysis is there, metal catalysis is there, now nano catalysis is there, and many other bio catalysis are there. Under the catalysis, again, a special kind of subject. Uh, most of the seminal works started somewhere in early two two thousand, but from last uh, eight to ten years onwards. There are huge number of contributions in this area. In fact, this subject has led medicinal chemistry and as well as traditional chemistry people to develop the strategies to come up with asymmetric synthesis by using alkaline catalysis. So therefore, I thought uh, uh, if we look for a field which is very unique, certainly it gives it gives us some advantage. So that is how. I started working in alkaline catalysis when I joined from my PhD. I am here to look into the background and origin. Alkaline catalysis will help in accelerations of reactions without any starting metal compounds. You can use them in very very small and minute quantities. Likewise, you can do so. By doing so, you can avoid many of the starting metal reagents, and many of these alkaline catalysts are recoverable. You can reuse. Recycle, and most of the alkaline catalytic strategies you can develop by using very very simple vinyl and environmental friendly solvents. And there are many instances where people develop strategies without using any solvent or solvent-free reactions, or by using water as a solvent medium, or any other organic solvent but which is easily recoverable. So therefore. There are four major possibilities with respect to alkaline catalysis. One is new catalyst designs. As a researcher or as a chemist, you always you can always design some new catalyst based on the existing literature or based on the kind of background knowledge that you get. And the second one is new substrate combinations. We heard about alkyl reaction, Perkin reaction, Michael reaction, and all these things. But whenever we read in PhD or MSc, the examples that we come across are very standard. But now, if you go, if you if you look into the literature in depth, there are so many substrates on which all these base of reactions can be performed. And by doing this, one can get very complex uh, structural frameworks. So that you know, one can also identify new structural substrate combinations. That is. in pursuit of chemical efficiency i think 
Uh, as as I today, there is not even a single organic reaction which can claim hundred percent efficiency. Efficiency in terms of yield or efficiency in terms of purity. But of course, now and then you may come across in the literature that all uh, the yield is almost all quantitative. When you talk about quantitative, people refer it as hundred percent yield. But believe me. Getting 100% efficiency in any of the chemical process is not possible at all. And here, by using organic catalysis, you can improve the efficiency of a reaction to the maximum extent by playing around the parameters. The fourth one and the most important one is applications of these organic catalysis in drug and drug side bioactive synthesis. If you look into the literature, I mean there are many drug molecules. Many bioactive molecules which are having chiral centers. For them, there is a possibility of mixture of isomers. Maybe in isomers, maybe they are isomers, right? So stereoisomeric mixtures might be possible. In that, if you look into the example of thalidomide, one isomer is good, other isomer is bad. But whenever you do a synthesis, you get both. Either you have to separate them so that half of your quantity goes into waste. So therefore, if you develop an asymmetric synthesis. There are high possibilities that you may end up with one of the isomer in excess quantity. So that is where alkaline catalysis plays a very very important role. Here under this, I will show you the methodology and objective. Whenever a researcher tries to work on alkaline catalysis, generally it may start with designing of the new catalyst. That is one option. Otherwise, you can also plan your reactions with the existing or known catalyst. But if you design your own catalyst, always that will be there in the history of the research. So therefore, designing of the catalyst with structural and functional moieties. As a chemist, you can easily make out what kind of functional groups might help you in improving the efficiency. Likewise, that's the first step. Then you need to synthesize those catalysts by employing any of the standard or known reaction protocols. Then you need to characterize them. When you are characterizing, you need to have some analytical data and spectral data. Once you are done with that, then the uh, uh, process comes on the evolution part. You have synthesized a group of catalysts, then you need to evaluate them whether the purpose of designing this catalyst is really satisfied or not. Unless a catalyst performs good, you may not be really interested to take it further. So that is where evaluation of catalysts for establishing is performed. There are several model reactions, based on reactions, or several protocols will be used. And sometimes maybe it is trial, sometimes maybe based on some scientific proof. All those will be carried out there. After that, optimization studies. <coughs> Evaluating is one aspect, optimization. Whenever you perform a similar kind of experiment, whoever performs, wherever they perform, they should. They should result into same kind of result. If it is so, then that is called as optimal condition or optimization. And there we use several spinning experiments, maybe 10 different solvents, 20 different solvents, maybe a, a range of temperature, a range of pressure conditions, a range of solvents, a range of additives or catalysts, all of those will be screened there. They are called as spinning experiments. Once you are satisfied with that, then you will go for substrate scope. Maybe all these initial studies you are, you are conducting on a model experiment, taking A plus B as the substrate. But then you need to expand this scope for other substrates. That is where you can play around. You can bring it so, uh, very simple to a complex substrate. You can perform this reaction. By the way, it may yield in complex molecules. In order to establish the reaction mechanism, Always it is suggestible to conduct mechanistic studies. This is where many of the analytical chemistry people, maybe like people with HPLC, mass spectral analysis, or people with molecular bonding, all may come into the picture. Here they may assist the organic chemist in evaluating the efficiency of the data science mechanism. Once you are done with this, if you could able to identify a proper catalyst with its efficiency, then now the Platform is open for you for your applications towards asymmetric synthesis of bioactive molecules. So, here in this uh, session, I will be talking to you on all these aspects 
where we could develop few of other aspects. Some of the other aspects are based on the protein, and then we could conduct some evaluation uh, studies. We could develop the uh, protocols, and finally we could also apply them for the synthesis of biomolecules. So here, algebraic catalysis is an into application. So in in short, whatever we discuss in the methodology. One line here. Alternative catalysis from design to application. So, if you look into here, this is protein which is already used very extensively in many research books across the world. Then, there are also several research, uh, research books who have modified this acidic part of the protein by different applicators. So, that all these are called as protein or loss. Depending upon their efficiency, the applications were already reported. Then, we thought we can play around this by, by introducing new functional modules or new appendages so that new catalyst design will be there we can evaluate the efficiency that is one part of the work the other part is multifunctional catalyst thiourea and this here what happens is as the number of functional group increases the stereochemistry and the steamer electronic factors of the molecule will increase and whenever it forms a transition state, again, depending upon the type of the substrate, further the efficiency can be evaluated. So, mainly we concentrated on these two aspects, but most of our research is oriented towards protein because protein is easily available and also cheaply available. You can design around. And here are a few examples of the catalyst based on this protein. Please look into this. This part is common, the protein part, and on this acid group, we have introduced the triazo group. By using click reaction. I think this kind of click reaction has got a lower price to uh, sharpness, right? So we have used the click reaction and introduced these two. We thought we can keep this OH as a pre hydroxy group, we can also protect it with some protection group. So then between these two things, this is strictly more indirect. And then again, we thought why to have one, uh, one CSP group here, we can reduce that and we can see around. Here, steering as well as stereoelectronic factors plays an important role in deciding the efficiency of this catalyst. On the other hand, we could also come up with some new designs on thiourea's. So this is an AZT, it's commercially available, we have coupled this with the thiourea model. So these are running to such designs. Based on this, we have evaluated the efficiency. Here, uh, I am showing you the summary. This is a Michael addition reaction. Michael addition reaction, and we have used some of our developed uh, developed of techniques. We performed the Michael addition reaction. We got the Michael adder. If you look into this, this is the transition state. And whenever we got this product with more than 90% ease and greater than 95% of enantiomeric excess, we thought the same similar strategy could be adopted to develop this two one. These two are the drug molecules which are used to treat depression, anxiety related symptoms. So, when the vaccine is discolored, as of today, there are several procedures or protocols to which one can uh, produce these molecules, but however, there is no straightforward protocol for using alternative catalysis. Then we thought we can get some edge there. We worked on this. In the similar sense, when we synthesize the different alternative catalysts, as I mentioned, we also took the help of molecular modeling or NMR studies. We have seen the structural characteristics of these catalysts. Based on this, before performing the experiment itself, we can predict which catalyst would be more efficient, in what way. Because it may involve in several kinds of hydrogen, kind of hydrogen body interactions, or metabolic, metabolic interactions, different kinds of forces. So here are a few examples of the design catalysts. Uh, the names of the catalysts are very simple. This is the proline product, this is the sugar part. So this is sugar amide pyrolidine. So this amide is from the sugar part and this is pyrolidine. Sugar amide pyrolidine. And this, all the catalysts that I am showing here are reported in the literature for the first time. We have designed it and we have, we have reported it. Here is again a micro addition. This one is thalamidoprolinamide. 
Proteinomide is there. So here amide path is towards the sugar. Here amide path is towards the protein. So therefore we call it as dialing of proteinomide. And this we use for order of reaction. And again, phenolidin is oxyimide. So this is the phenolidin part. This is oxyimide. This is oxyimide. It, it appears to be very simple. Yes, all these catalysts we can prepare in hardly two or three steps. And we use for nitrogen. Again, this one, pyrrolidine, pyrrolidine. Pyrrolidine is available, pyrrolidine is also available. Only this is available, we need to reduce the amide of carboxylic acid group to CH2O8. A coupling will be there. You will get this one. Pyrrolidine, pyrrolidine. If you look into the structural diversity, it appears to be very simple. It is a little more complex. It is also equally complex with more kind of uh, electronic. Uh, uh, an electronic future to be more, few electronic future. And here it appears to be a little more complex. But when we evaluate these things, look at the efficiencies. Here we could able to achieve more than 95% of yield, almost only in every case. But looking into the yields, again it varies based on the substrate. Some substrates are giving good yields, some substrates are giving not so good yields. And here are few more. Pyrrolidin oxytrizole. Pyrrolidin is there, oxytrizole. Because oxytrizole is available uh, commercially, just we need to copy it. And another one is pyrrolidin prizole imide. So we again use a quick reaction here to make this. So if you look into the structure, it is uh, sterically elongated here. It can form a kind of cavity, right? It can form a kind of cavity, which, which may not be possible with this. Maybe they may form a quite cavity, but it is a smaller cavity, but it is a very bigger cavity. Yeah. So, likewise, here another one, minus 12 kind of proteinomide. So, therefore, we always try to identify simple and easily available chemicals so that we can use them as appendages in the protein. And few more here. AZT proteinomide. AZT is commercially available, proline is commercially available. Put them together. Again, it forms a very big series of uh, molecules that are here. So, likewise, see here, these catalysts were prepared. We have studied uh, NMR and molecular modeling support uh, aspects. So, all these things one can get from molecular modeling or DP calculation. Of course, that, that part we don't do. We take care of so here comes the application part. Here comes the application part. Maybe I think you might not have to have about 8 to 9 different techniques. Out of them, amino oxy pyrrolidine was found to be very really effective. We use the same techniques and try to synthesize these two molecules. The reaction appears to be very simple. By the reaction is a very, very old reaction. It's not a new reaction. But here, getting the selectivity. We could get 94% yield and more than 96% of anti-sugaric excess. That means 98% of the major isomer and 2% of the minor isomer is forming. So this is how amino catalysis will help us in, in the synthesis of one isomer specifically over the other. And then we apply the same strategy. Look at this, we have taken the same Michael and that. Then we have conducted a reduction reaction followed by epoxy opening, and then hydrogen hydrate treatment, then by other reaction, you get the breath of action. All the standard reactions. There is no reaction which we have developed on our own. We have applied only different reactions that have already reported in the region by taking the substrate. And we could get breath of action only in 5 steps. And this is the because we are trying to find a ticket for this. Since it is a forum, uh, of the learned societies, I am showing. If it is an open forum, I would not have, uh, I would not have shown any of these results. So that is the reason why all the unpublished results. Now, in the same manner, we thought we can also apply uh, asymmetric synthesis, tra synthesis strategy for the synthesis of protein derivatives. In the literature, Rehydroxy proteins are already known, but somehow some isomers are feasible, some isomers are not feasible. Then, if 
not much learning from statistics. Why? The reason is here. Many of the 3 hydroxy proteins are found to be present as structural motifs in bioactive compounds. And they may also serve as alternative batteries. Based on these features, look into these examples. This is a kilomyce, a very big bioactive compound. Here there is one 3 hydroxy protein, here is one 3 hydroxy another 3 hydroxy protein. Similarly, in this. Similarly, in this. All these are naturally available bioactive compounds. When you say naturally available compounds, they will be available in very, very small quantities. But to make them in larger quantities, you need to depend on synthetic chemistry. So that is how we focus on these small molecules. There are all the other examples. So many of them have shown a greater parameter. So therefore, there are reports where 3 hydroxy protein is also isolated from the nature, but however, as I mentioned, it's very tedious and taking and hardly you may end up with some small quantities of the compound. So this is how we thought we can come up with all isomers of 3 hydroxy protein. So this is the synthetic approach uh, by using Sharpless Asimetric Deconcentration. And if I show the entire strategy, hardly it takes about 7 or 8 steps to get all 4 possible isomers. And again, this is uh, the first report for the process which brings you all 4 isomers. At that time, I was not having any knowledge on IPR, so we just published. Later on, we realized that if we had tried the patents on this by now, it would have been commercialized. Many companies are using similar strategies. So, this is the entire strategy. Of course, I don't want, uh, I don't go into the details because uh, every basic premise can easily understand the reactions that are seen here. Here, we use sharpness asymmetric deforestation to get these two different epoxides and based on that we can play around to get the required acid. So all the like protection, there are so many protections and deprotections which are quite easy to perform in a laboratory. Of course your southern area might have done very extensive or elongated synthesis. So, so this is a quite common thing for an organic image, especially for the people who do PAP and ISP at least. So this is how, uh, with this epoxide we could get uh, this isomer and likewise the earlier one, this one. We could get trans. So both this and trans are possible. And by changing the conditions, uh, conditions of surface population, it can reverse the isomers. So therefore, in short, to summarize on this word, synthesis of all steel isomers of pre protein could be carried out. Pre-hydroxyproteins and protein intermediates are as valuable building blocks. This protocol or this strategy helps us to synthesize major building blocks for the value compound. And we can also screen them as organocatalysis, derivatization, and we can explore for furthermore organocatalysis from these designs. So we have, we have published this in the synthesis. Because from 2013 or 14 onwards, most of our focus was majorly towards making gradients better complications. So this is the earlier practice part which I mentioned. So this is how uh, it's already a known reaction by the protein. Protein is there, dollar added the function and vitalization happens. And see the purpose of uh, developing protein analysis is this. Whenever you take protein as such, it, it also helps in achieving the selectivity, but however, the selectivities are very, very low. Hardly 10 to 15 percent, sometimes 40 percent. Which I do not anything. And solubility of protein is very, very low because it is highly polar. So solubility is very low. Also, it has got moderate steric control. And by replacing this carboxylic acid group with other molecules, you can play around this three and also you can achieve all this. Retention of the active site, this is the active site, so this part is retained, increase steel control. So you increase the bulk, as you increase the bulk and as you increase the function groups, the steel control may be manageable. And hydrogen body ability, by introducing the required functional groups, you can expand the hydrogen body ability, improve solubility, 
Yes, many of most of the candies that I have shown, they are they are quite soluble in major major organic solvents, mainly from salmon, dichloroquine to water. In all this, it is soluble. They are soluble. And then high solubilities. So therefore, when benzaline list and macular, they introduced proline as an alkaline catalyst as as part of the signal verbs. Within soon, some hundreds of catalysts were reported. By the when I made a literature survey, I could find about more than 300 alkaline catalysts are of proline. Right. Here, here is the strategy to which we have to be synthesized proline. It will be protected with bulk, then followed by the action of the carboxylic acid group, then followed by nucleophilic displacement. So, whichever nucleophile you use, you can replace it with that, and then you can, you can get the minimum one loss. And coming to the optimization studies, either you can screen the solvents, but generally we practice the use of the solvents. By taking this other this reaction, we use 8 to 10 different solvents. Then we identify the best solvent. Then additives meaning. Yes, additives are really important for analytic organometallization because they will help in enhancing the reaction progress. And then so acidic, generally acidic catalyst and acidic additives are the best catalyst may be used. Sometimes additive free reactions also can be developed. And effect of catalyst loading. How much percentage of catalyst you need to load? Because here, alkaline catalysts do not need any stoichiometric amount, but it needs certain amount. So that are even that screens it performs. So this is how we did the solvent screening. Look into this uh, ten different solvents. Solvent was screened, and this is the time period, and these are the yield and energy selectivity. Out of this, whichever is better, we go with that. As an optimal condition. That is the screening of the additives. additives. Then comes catalyst loading. 2 more percent, 5 more percent, 10 more percent, 20 more percent. Likewise. So, if you use low catalyst loading and if you can achieve greater efficiencies, then your catalyst efficiency is more and more. Otherwise, you may have to use little excess part. So, this is how we should come up with solvent free or no solvent condition. Trichloracetic acid has an additive with 2 more percent of loading and that is uh, that is of 10 more percent. So with these parameters we can achieve uh, decent selectivities. And talking about the coming uh, on the substrate scope, we can pair on this substrate, we can pair on this substrate. So in, in one set, in, in one aspect, we took several nitrolytics, in other aspects, several ketones of our carbonyl compound. That's why it is the carbon set. So these are the examples that we have performed starting from simple to the functional uh, the substituted ones. And then heteronitrolysis, then the both of parameters, different parameters. And here is the mechanism. Uh, generally, a uh, minimal addition or proline based organocatalytic. Reaction goes through chemical mechanism. Luckily, in this particular catalyst, when we conducted analytical screening by using mass spectral studies, we could able to tap this. We could able to tap this. And also, we could able to tap here, the respective molecular weights. So then, we could ascertain that yes, this reaction is. Main mechanism only. It is already known that it goes through your main mechanism, but however, we do have an evidence of this. And here is the evidence. So, this is the DNA, this is the transistor other. Once we take this, it will form the final product. And this is the story of another amino matrix. I don't know if I don't spend much time here. But here, this is the catalytically active side, and here, this is in. Increase speed control, increase speed control and average body size. So therefore we try to include three four aspects here so that it can form a big cavity and then a specific reaction will take place. And here is a synthetic strategy, very simple. This is an azide which we can obtain through nuclear displacement of uh, 
Oh, it's a good idea. And this is again the same thing. We are going to do the same thing. We are going to do the same thing. We are going to do the same thing. And this is the entire strategy. Again, we use only similar array components. And then, we use the same thing. Here, we use the same thing. We use the same thing. We use the same thing. And then the subset code. And luckily, this category is for was working then in case uh, in, in water. So here water is the solvent. So when water is the solvent, it is highly environmental friendly. So here you see the proposed transitions. For example, we did not do any mass spectral or other analysis about studies here. So in summary, if you look into these two aspects, this looks to be very simple. Very simple, but it, it looks to be so complex in structure. But however, for the same reaction, this was more efficient. So always one factor may not play the role in deciding the efficiency of a given algorithm catalyst. There are several factors, both feelings give you upon it. And also maybe the reaction conditions. And now it now in this era, discussion is not about whether you are doing organ catalysis or metal catalysis or transition rate catalysis. The discussion is whether the reaction that you are perform, performing is an ideal synthesis or not. You, you can use gold, you can use sand. If you see the literature, there are many reports coming where they use gold as a catalyst. Gold catalyst. So when you can use gold for reactions, why do you spend money in research? Right or not? Already you are rich. Then why do you wish to do this as? You should become great by using sand or clay as a catalyst and achieve the efficiency. But unfortunately the scenario is reverse. But then people say yes, gold is used because it results in the required products with required efficiency. So therefore, you can use any catalyst, you can use any parameters. But the thing is, you need to achieve an ideal synthesis or your reaction should be an ideal synthesis. A reaction to be ideal, it should be simple. If you make it complex, it will lead to more and more complex things. Next one is, it should be resourceful. Not like only on one substrate is it working, on other substrate is not working. It should be green. Green in the sense the solvent should be either recoverable or the environmental friendly. It should save your time, energy, money and resources also. It should not take 10 days to perform this reaction. Or it should not take 1 lakh. If you spend 1 lakh rupees to get 1 milligram of carbon, then maybe it is not doing that all. Cost effective. That's what it is. I generally always try to develop one point synthesis. Right? Why pressure cooker has come? Suppose when I was in room studying a BSMS Cooking rice, cooking dal, cooking curry, these are many very different activities, very difficult. Take one five one pressure cooker, put everything there. Dal, curry, all good, keep it. And you need to start reading. After half an hour, three or four minutes will come, you know that it is done. Leave it for ten more minutes, it then go. That's all. Do you say that one point reaction is a strategy adopted from Western culture? No. We are already doing this, but not for chemical synthesis. Yes, I know. So nowadays, you see in the, in the research, whoever does a one part reaction, oh, this is very, the most efficient reaction strategy is one part reaction strategy. Because cleaning is less, otherwise how many events you need to clean? Only one to the clean, keep it, go. That's all. Very simple. It was our own practice, but somehow we could not realize this. Well, Western people started really calling them, but oh, very great. They are the great researchers and we are the followers. So, therefore, always try to develop a one part protocol or a simple protocol. Then comes atom economy. So, when we talk about atom economy, there are different definitions, there are different interpretations. But the thing is, whatever amount of substrate you are taking, if it equates in the product, I think you are almost a clear to atom economy. Okay? If you look into the scientific definitions, there will be different definitions, different opinions. But as such, if whatever you take, whatever you get, if they are equated, then fine, you are on par with the atom economy. And then the high yield. And I still remember.
by your brother by colleague who joined along with you for PhD, you are saving the brain. In one way, for 39 steps he did, 48 steps he was studying. All the time, hardly he used to get less than 1 milligram of copper. I don't know how to measure that less than 1 milligram. Always, after even after 15 years, he could not submit this because he did not do the step. He left PhD and he joined as a faculty at IEP 3 portion. Now he is one of the famous faculty. Yes, because see he, he could have submitted the thesis, but he does know if that's not the thing, I am not the that person. He gets out of But whenever you plan a reaction, plan in such a way that there are good chances of success. Because yes, failures are there, always failures will be there. Success will not come without failures. But if you only get if you only get failures after failures at one time, at one point of time. There will be only two chances. There, there will be only two chances for you. Either leave or just continue with the failure. So therefore, then the people leave. Please don't do that. After few attempts, you will be knowing whether you could make it or not. If you, if you are unable to make it, then on your part, that's all. So therefore, if you can, if you can incorporate these aspects while you plan your research strategy, then certainly you can achieve it. Good thing. I think we will stop here in about 2-3 minutes. Okay? I have few slides on this so that we can start the second part in after that. And now, one part of multi-component reaction. The same thing, the same story I mentioned. Now, uh, if you look into the multi-component reactions, of course, I told you our traditional story. Even in scientific communities, multi-component reactions is not a new thing. Hardly gained importance in the last two or three decades. But look at the Sweeper synthesis, 1850, before our first freedom fight. Sweeper synthesis is an example of multi component synthesis. Look at Hans, Hans reaction, Bidiari reaction, Manish reaction, Pasmiari reaction, Buddhi, so many. Now, even other organic multi component reactions are there. And if you do a simple other organic reactions, you are like a very old or very traditional researcher, not a, not a modern researcher. So therefore, always you need to plan research in a manner that you end up with greater features. These are the examples. So it comes to the multi-component reaction. Three component, two component, four component. And I think in coming decade, we can see hundred component reactions also. And there is no wonder our own Indians will come up with that reaction. Because we try to do things in a simple manner. The only problem is we don't realize the own potential. If someone tells us do this way, yes, we will be ready. Right? Even multi component reaction strategy was also used in the total sense of molecules. Right? Right, Dr. Robinson. He is considered to be the god of organic chemistry. Whether you accept or not, I think you all, are, all can easily accept this. Robert Hawking said, suppose if you are a post, we had, I think uh, in ISCT, uh, we even had, uh, we had two CMO scientists, two of them, not Robert Hawking, uh, Robert Hawking or his student. I know whenever we see them, it appears that we are, we are also, we are also working with Robert Hawking. So that kind of feature they got. Hawking said, as it says, Prophilo in 1970, and then several other uh, reported the synthesis of complex organic molecules by, by using one part organic, uh, one part top, one part reactions, or multi component reactions. There are few examples. Look at this, very simple examples. One, two, three, four, just mix, got it. If India, I would have, suppose if I had discovered this, here I would have a pressure cooker. It implies that. Put put them put them together to part the result. Look into this. One, two, three, look at the substrate, the complex thing, and they got the product. And one, two, three, they are very simple, they got simple bread, you can they got this. So therefore, no other field in organic chemistry has about faster work only a couple of years compared to multi-component reactions. Very, very important. Now, this is a very good scope for every researcher. To contribute towards this because it has got greater and greater advantages in comparison to any other reaction. So, with this, I thank you all here and uh
If you have any questions, you can take them. I think we are on time. Sir, deliver us a lecture very nicely and neatly about alkalometric catalysis. He delivered on the microaddition reaction, isometric provides catalysis, aerobic organized, the hydroxyl provide, ideal synthesis. Mainly, we must know about ideal synthesis, why we pass our environment with some protein. That's why we must always know about ideal synthesis, which means agreed synthesis. Right. Sir, thank you very much, sir. I have a great opportunity with you in my PhD career starting days. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming up. There is a lunch session. Please go ahead. And at 2 o'clock, uh, open for discussion. Anyone yes, have any questions? You can take some questions. We can take now, we can take after lunch anytime. We can take during lunch. Anytime. Anytime. Next session also there. So if you have questions, after lunch, you will ask. Thank you.